Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the Lev. It's gone from simple PR disaster, what the executives at Bud Light were expecting to just be a little blip on the radar, a speed bump, you know, brand mismanagement, to what is now being dubbed a nightmare from hell. And you know what? It's probably the best way to describe this situation. Bud Light just simply can't recover. Normally, your company runs into a controversy, you release a statement disavowing the individual that you're connected to, or you simply just shut up and just ride the wave until it's over. Things go back to normal, or at least get close to back to normal. But in this case, it seems permanent. The brand has been tarnished to an extent that it's pretty much done. They've shed a portion of their consumer base, and those people aren't coming back. Ideological, ethical decisions have been made internally in said consumer. You are done. It's a divorce. You're the ex-wife. The marriage is over, and the consumer has simply moved on. Bud Light seems to be finally realizing that. The realization that the brand is doomed. Let me show you guys what's going on. We got some stuff to to get into so let's roll the tape all right folks so the great kevin o'leary has chimed in dubbing the bud light situation as a nightmare from hell take a look at this well bud light um has become the poster boy for brand mismanagement from multiple perspectives so let, let me lay it out for you because th these th the discussions that have arisen and the narrative that's arisen around bud light is probably a good lesson for every ceo in every sector of the economy Number one, it highlights the power of social media. This, this issue went viral in 48 hours. Yeah. And most often when an issue goes viral like that, it burns out in another 48 hours. But that's not what happened here. The story and narrative changed to sales. And so people that did not like the message, regardless of where you stand on these social issues or gender narrative or whatever, they took it out by basically boycotting the product mm. immediately yeah. and switching preference to other brands that did not make them get involved in this issue. Now, if you're trying to manage that and trying to learn something from it, and I certainly talked to all my CEOs about this because here we are talking about it in its second month. Yeah, This is a nightmare from hell for the brand. You have to ask yourself, in crisis management, what do you do? Because if you go to the other side and try and balance the gender narrative, you're going to get a whole new onslaught of people yeah. that don't like that. So when you go into gender narrative on a beer, which is primarily consumed by men, maybe you should have thought a little bit about that in reading that room. Maybe you should say, well, does this really fit my consumer's psyche and narrative? The great Kevin O'Leary hits the nail on the head once again. What an absolutely stupid decision it was. Now, obviously, we don't need to rehash the decision itself. Gender ideology as a marketing shtick, especially in a masculine sphere, is clearly completely idiotic. What I want to focus on, however, is the nightmare from hell aspect. And the other important point that he brought up, that it's been six weeks, I think even longer than six weeks at this point, and still there's been zero sales recovery, zero brand recovery. In fact, things keep getting progressive worse for Bud Light and Anheuser-Busch. It's been roughly a month and a half, and it's probably going to be the same thing after two months, three months, four, five, six, a year, two years. I don't know how much longer it's going to take or if the problem is fixable for Bud Light at all, to be honest, because we're seeing new consumer habits. It's the point that I've mentioned multiple times. It just goes to show how stupid the Bud Light marketing team really was. A product like Bud Light isn't something that's required in one's life. You know, it's not like it's a product that does something better than other products that's simply more useful and they have that patent. It's a beer for Pete's sakes. And there's a whole lot of different beers and frankly, Bud Light's probably one of the shitter ones. Let's be completely real. Bud Light had brand loyalty and that's the only thing that was keeping them alive. People are simply drawn to that brand. It's an American brand, even though it's owned by a Belgian company these days. And they were loyal to it. You know, it's like those good old boys who just drink Bud Light. Well, you turn them off and in turn, you turn them on to other beers and possibly even better beers. Now those Bud Light boys are Yingling boys or maybe another non-woke brand. And all of a sudden their palate is changing and they're saying, hey, you know what? I like this 
this product and that becomes their product. You lost them. They're gone and they're not coming back. And it's not like, go oh, after six months, they're going to come back because they don't have a choice and the new product simply doesn't perform to the same extent as the old one. No, it's a beer and that's their new beer and you're done. Beer industry is in shock. Here's a beer industry expert giving us a look into how insiders in the industry are feeling. The whole industry is in shock. Um, even Bud's competitors um, aren't really dancing on the grave because they know it could have happened to them because it's, you know, this particular uh, promotion just really struck a chord. It was just a bridge too far, apparently, for consumers. And the fact that, you know, we're in week six and the it doesn't look like it's getting any better. In fact, the numbers just keep getting a little worse every week. Um, you know, really down in the 25% area and their competitors are up almost just as much. And that's continuing through uh, today. Uh, boycotts like this usually do blow over, as you know, very fairly quickly within a, a couple of weeks or so. So this is really unusual to go into two months. They can't believe how long it lasted. I'm telling you, they thought it was just going to be a small little blip on the radar, like I always say, and it was simply going to disappear. Well, absolutely not. And the double pronged aspect is making it even worse. You know, Bud Light had to make a decision. And in a way they did. They said, you know what? We're going to become a woke beer. They forged that relationship with wokesters, but didn't go all the way. And you know how it works with the wokies. If you don't go all the way, well, then you're pretty much a fascist. And so now the woke left wants nothing to do with them. They should have gone all the way, you know, they should have gone full on woke and just made that their new identity. It probably would have been less damaging, but instead they played that middle ground and now they're getting BTFO'd. Bud Light boycott already cost Anheuser-Busch $15.7 billion. I mean, holy moly, folks, it was a big headline when they lost $6 billion in market cap. Now we're looking at a market value drop of $16 billion, because guess what? The stock keeps dropping, and I'm telling you, mark my words, it's going to drop even further. It's probably going to have a little bit of a bounce back as, of course, investors come back in trying to buy the dip. But I don't know, I would stay away from this toxic brew of a stock. The logic to buy in just simply isn't there. After six weeks... Things keep getting worse and it's likely to continue or it's likely to stagnate. Well, you can't justify buying the stock at the current price if the company continues to lose money. People don't want to buy the stock of a declining brand. It literally defeats the purpose of investing in a company. You want to buy a company that's growing, that's going to return dividends, that you're going to make money on. Well, how is Bud Light supposed to make money when their product is being given away for essentially free? And yes, that's really happening. Stores are now selling Bud Light for free as Mulvaney backlash continues. Some Budweiser products are being offered for free after a $15 rebate from Anheuser-Busch. Look at the picture right over here. <laughs> I wasn't kidding, it wasn't a joke when I said that they're literally trying to give this stuff away for free, and nobody's taking it, at least in select markets. They can't even give away the product. How are they supposed to make money? I think at some point we're going to hear that Anheuser-Busch is seriously reducing production or even halting production in general. They might even have to rebrand at some point. This is one of the biggest PR blunders, one of the biggest marketing disasters in American history. I still stand by my statement, Bud Light must be made an example of. Other companies must pay attention, be very weary. Gender ideology, and especially targeting young people with gender ideology, is a cheap, pathetic excuse for a marketing angle. It's unacceptable, and if you do it, well, consumers are going to make decisions, and those will be very long-lasting decisions. Let's just leave it at that. Get woke, go broke. I don't even slightly feel bad for these woke corporations. That's what I got for you guys, though. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Of course, you know that we'd love to have you here. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you on the next one.